listening to the Joe Camo Show. Real sports, real talk. All right, guys, got a very special guest, mixed martial artist Nick Newell on the show. Very fascinating story from what I've read online, but I don't know how fascinating it is on a deeper level because that's why I wanted to have him on because I want to hear his story. Uh, MMA fighter, coach, uh, father, BJJ, black belt, second degree, as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Welcome to the show, Nick. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. I, I uh, can't wait to chat it up. Thanks, man. I really want to hear your story, man. You're a mixed martial artist. And obviously there's, uh, you know, some people say it's a disability. I think it might be a, a positive positive thing. I want to hear the advantages of of fighting with one arm. I really want to hear your story, man, uh, how it started. I heard you you were born uh, with one arm. And I guess that's what really draws a lot of people to, to your content is the fascination of that. But I really want to just hear your story from the ground up because it is inspiring, obviously. First of all, making MMA is, is hard on, on its own, right? And what you've done is is just absolutely amazing. So I really want I'm, – I'm inspired, man, to hear your story. Where, I mean, where does it all start? Yeah, so uh, I, I can see I have only one hand. On my arm, I have like three-fourths of it left. One hand, one arm doesn't really bother me. I don't really care. Um, but, I mean, it's it doesn't really define who I am. It's just a part of who I am. So there's like – I embrace it. You know, I'm, I'm different than, than everyone else. It's not, it's, it's a part of who I am. It's not a huge part of who I am, but it is a part of who I am. And, uh, it makes it interesting. People can, uh, I feel relate to me, even though I have one hand, they have two hands, but a lot of people fight different battles. A lot of people are struggling in a lot of different ways that you can't see. And you can kind of relate to me because you can see what I'm going through because I wear it on my sleeve or my lack of a sleeve, uh, as I like to say. So people get in touch with that. And I think it helps um, people associate with me. Um, I was born like this. I was born, it was called congenital amputation. The reason why, or the actual name, um, I don't know. I never really looked into it too much. Um, people think I'm crazy for it, but it's, I am the way I am. I've accepted the way that I am, uh, from a young age and I'm okay with it. And I'm a regular person. I'm a regular human being. And, um, you know, I got to do, what I need to do to make it in this world and winners win with what they have. So I was born with one hand. I live my life just like anyone else. My family didn't treat me any different. They didn't baby me. They were rough with me. You know, my dad was a milkman when I was born and he was like a high school bad boy, like street fighter type guy. Right. You know, and uh, my mom was like a troublemaker, like loud mouth, talk, talks all the time, gets in arguments type, very brash, right? My mother's very brash. So um, I was raised kind of tough and, uh, and they never took it easy on me. They never told me like, don't go out and play. Don't do this. Don't try that. You know, I, uh, they split up early. I, I don't even remember them ever being together, but, um, I was encouraged if I was like, Hey, I, they signed me up for soccer. I played soccer. You want to play base? I said, I want to play baseball. Okay. I will sign you up for baseball. My dad actually tried to get me to do wrestling when I was young, but I didn't want to. Right. And I, I kind of regret it. I should have, I should have started a little earlier before I was in high school. I would have had a better couple first years, but, um, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, but for me, I just don't put much thought into being different. I just put thought into winning with what I have and being successful no matter what. At the end of the day, people have their own problems and don't really care too much about yours in the big scheme of things so if you want to do something you got to go out there and you got to accomplish it yourself that's true a lot of people have like invisible disabilities or something that they're struggling with whether it be mental or like even like diabetes right certain diabetics have yeah. you know, 
conditions they're dealing with. And just because yours is physical, right? It's like, uh, you know, more people may just see it and be like, you know, ha have questions or like are intrigued by it or, you know. But my thing is like, what got you into MMA? Is it just because like you just had a chip on your shoulder like you wanted to prove the world wrong? Or was it just like, I just love martial arts. I'm just going to do this anyway. Um, When I was young, I always liked the action movies. So like, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, those were like my favorite actors growing up. Jackie Chan. Um, I loved everything they were in. And I've always just been intrigued by fighting. I started off as a big pro wrestling fan. So I watched like a lot of pro wrestling. And, and uh, that kind of pulled me in to regular wrestling because my my neighbor was like hey i'm gonna join the real wrestling team when i was in high school and i was like oh my dad wanted me to do that but i didn't do it and uh i ended up just joining because um my neighbor joined and then i fell in love with it yeah those movies are like i grew up with the same ones they're so inspirational rocky was the underdog right and then i blood sport right like the guy was blinded in the last part of Bloodsport. He still ended up winning the Kumite. Like I was, I was inspired, you know, by those movies as well. I mean, I tried MMA, but it was like never on your level. I just tried it; it just wasn't for me. Uh, but I, I, I put my hand in there, and it was fun. But yeah, those movies can be inspiring, and they inspired me for the wrong reasons. But it looks like you took it full force, so that's amazing. Uh, Sixteen and four. You were. I heard you were retired in twenty fifteen, kind of semi retired. Now you're back. You have a fight coming up. What February twenty sixth? Am I right? Uh, yeah, not a fight. It's just a jiu jitsu match. So oh, okay. it's a jiu jitsu tournament. They just made it kind of look like a fight. So everyone's like, "Oh, you're fighting? That's crazy!" I'm like, "It's on a Monday night, guys. It's a jiu jitsu tournament." Right. But um, yeah, I had my last fight in twenty twenty one. Uh, I think I just kind of want to do one more. I turn thirty eight next month, and uh. I'm just don't feel like I can operate at the same level that I used to in terms of um, fighting, but I feel like my grappling is still very good. So I can kind of take it a little less serious and go out and train and compete at higher weight classes. And I've been doing jujitsu at a pretty high level and been successful mm -hmm. lately. So I'm kind of focusing on that for a little bit right now. Now, I'm not fighting, but I feel like I'm in relatively good shape. We're, I'm a little older than you, but I'm not going to discuss my age. But um, I'm even using the gray stuff here to cover the grays. But um, what happens, do you think, with fighters typically? I mean, age obviously is a factor, but what do you find with you has regressed? Like you just said, you're not the same, but I feel as strong as I ever was. Mind you, you lose a little bit of flexibility, stuff like that. But what do you think from a fighter perspective? I know some people just have like, like Chuck Liddell, I found that he was just getting knocked more and his jaw becomes loose or something like that they kind of lose that what do you think that you you're losing as you get older is it just flexibility is it power is it speed overall what are you sensing that you're losing um honestly i i kind of worded that a little wrong because i still feel good i still feel like i can do everything that i did before and i still feel like i'm great but for me the camps and the weight cuts yeah. And uh, everything that you have to go through, my body doesn't recover the same way that it used to. I think around 36, it really started to change. And uh, it takes me a little longer. I got to take more time off in between sessions. I got to watch it. I got to be a little bit smarter. And then just the weight cuts from, you know, 180, sometimes even more I weigh down to 155 is just kind of a lot for me. And um, I just don't have the motivation to do the huge weight cuts and the camps and it's just really hard on my body. So, um, I think I just want to do just one more time. I'll suck it up and I'll do it because when I do something, I do it a hundred percent. I don't half ass it. So I'm not going to do something if I can't do it the way that I want to in terms, uh, I mean with fighting. Right. Yeah. Like, um, so now you're more focused on the teaching too. And is that something that you're more passionate about? Now it's kind of like it's shifting towards more teaching anyway. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I have, I have a group of young fighters that are crazy talented and I'm trying to guide them up the right way and, uh, teach them the things that I know, tell them the mistakes that I made so they don't make the same ones. Not that I made any huge ones, but, um, 
just kind of go from there and and do that it keeps me busy i mean my gym is like a regular paycheck too you know it's like depending on how many members you have but it takes up a lot of my time running a business and then um having a family and training myself it's there's a lot of stuff going on you know like it's like four full-time jobs right now I'm curious about the UFC. So what happened? Like, did you end up? You never ended up making the actual UFC, like getting to the UFC platform. But you've achieved so much, right? Like, it's so hard to make the UFC. Was it just like the the contacts? Because you have a really good record. Was there anything that hindered that that peak to make the UFC? Because you're in Bellator, top top. It's a top league, right? What happened with the UFC? Were you aimed? Were you, did you want to make the UFC? What ended up happening there? Yeah, I um. I, I mean, I tried for a while. I had a record, certainly, that was good enough. I had I was beating guys with good records. Um, you know, I felt like I should have been in. I got a shot in the Contender Series, and I kind of underperformed. I got out-wrestled the match. I didn't get hurt or anything like that, but right. I lost the positional game. And, I mean, that's the way that it is. There's a lot of people that lose on the Contender Series and bounce back and make it to the UFC. But... I got an offer from Bellator and if I wanted to make real money or if I wanted to just like wait around on local shows, not making any money fighting for nothing. And then hopefully they take me. I was like, no, I'm just going to go to Bellator and just take the money. And the same thing happened when I was with WSOF, good contract, good offer. Right. You know, so I'm just going to go there because I'm, I'm a prize fighter. You know, I want to set up my future. I'm not going to kill myself for pennies. Once you reach a certain age, when you're young and you live at home and you do all this, you know, you chase, you chase those three letters, but when you're older and you're more established and you want a good life for yourself, you, you chase, chase the numbers. You know, some people chase the letters and some people chase the numbers. I really want to dive into your mental game because that has to be very strong. I would think like most people would think, okay, it's a disadvantage to fight fight, fight with one arm, right? Because I've never thought of this. But did you find it was actually an advantage? Because yeah, they have one less arm to grab or whatever. Did it work? Did you use it to your advantage? How did that? How was that a mental thing for you? And did it actually work towards your advantage to have one 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 limb? You know, one limb. I don't know. You know, uh, I think it would probably be easier if I had to, to be honest with you. Um, I think it has more disadvantages than it has advantages. There's a lot of moves that I can't really do well or I can only do on one side. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, there's I have people that come in and see me that don't know their left from right. They're so goofy. They have horrible balance, you know, but it's about getting better and working with what you have and being successful regardless. So with me, um, I'm going to do what I need to do to win. Advantage, disadvantage, whatever. No matter what body type you have, you have an advantage or disadvantage. Right. Um, I don't think about it. They're like, oh, you make weight easier. It's like probably like the whatever's left of my arm is probably like two or three pounds. You know, so it's not really that big right. of an advantage in terms of that. But I mean, I don't really put too much thought in it. You know, the same thing. People are like, oh, would you be as motivated if you had two hands? I'm like, I don't know, probably. You know, like, I'm just, uh, I'm not doing this because I want to be something that I'm not. I, I, I don't do it because I'm like, oh, I got to do this to prove to everyone. And it's not true. I don't do it to prove anything to anyone except, um, myself you know i mean i like helping people and i like people saying that i give them motivation and things yeah. like that but if i was doing it just for them then i wouldn't be who i was because i'd be trying to be something that i'm not and i am who i am and i do it because i love it and i do it because i want to do it and everyone that i help along the way is a bonus you know, if you know me, I'll always help people. I'll always go out of my way. I'll always be nice to people. I'll say hi to new people that come in the gym. I'm not a very selfish person. Um, but the things that I do when it pertains to my life, I'm I'm doing because I want to do them. Nice. 
I want to have some fun here since you brought up the 80s here because I had some other fighters on and we always ask these questions, okay? Let, let, I just want to have some fun here. Uh, Steven Seagal or Van Dam, who wins in a fight? Now, my, I, I, obviously, I was doing some more context on this. Apparently, you know, Seagal, I don't think there's any registered fights for Seagal, was there? I think he's just, uh, some people say he's Bullshito. Who would win in that fight, like, now? I mean, no, no, let's go back then in their prime. I'm just curious. Prime, prime for prime. Prime for prime. Well, I remember the time when all the fighters were trolling and letting all the Brazilian fighters were letting Seagal in their corner, and whenever they won, no matter what move they won with, um, they said, oh, yeah, Steven Seagal showed me that in the bag, and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the reason why I did that. Um, but uh, Van Damme, for sure, Van Damme would win. He was a um, real fighter, I think. And the other, again, like with, with Yeah, I don't know if he was a real fighter. I know he got his ass kicked by um, some, like, bodyguard one time because he was, like, he was like coked out of his mind or something. <laughs> but, um, I just see the clips of Seagal like grabbing people's wrists and flipping them and stuff. And I'm like, this dude is goofy. Like, I like him just because it's funny. You know, like, I'm happy he's around because he's he brings me comedy and joy in my life. He's delusional but, a little bit. He's a little delusional, I think. But, like, Van Damme's doing the splits and throwing crazy kicks. And, like, even if it's not, like, real fight stuff, it's still pretty – impressive i would have to say that van damme would win that fight is that like pretty unanimous amongst all the people you ask uh, some people said seagal but a lot of people saying van damme though um because then i started doing some more research and then like i saw this interview where they're asking seagal they're like if there's any fighter that would protect you that you'd like that, that, that you know at the time this was like 10 years ago that you'd want on your side who would it be and they named all these people he's like can i laugh in your face I? like i think he's like buying his yeah. own us like he's so delusional like i think he thinks he's the toughest man on the planet and when you watch him it's just like he goes i want to train like the samurai like i want to keep it standing up fights don't really end up on the ground he's like the only way they end up at the ground is when i knock you down like i don't know i just find he's a little delusional i don't know what it is with that guy didn't judo jean choke him unconscious and make him crap his pants who is this Gene LaBelle, look it up. Gene right, LaBelle. I'll look, I'll, look it up. I'll look it up. I don't know. Judo Gene was Ronda's coach. Ronda's judo coach. Um, oh, okay. Absolute legend. And he's like a, um, he's he's deceased now, but he was like very highly regarded judo player. And also he worked in the movie and film industry. Yeah. Uh, I actually ran into him before one of my fights and he gave me his number. He's like, you need to be a stunt double. Cause it's cause of the hand he's like, you could play this and that. And I was like, Oh, okay. Okay. But I didn't really have any interest in, in, in uh, in doing it at the time, you know, I was a little focused on fighting, but, uh, it was really cool to meet him. Also, you mentioned Carl Weathers. I was a big fan. I posted about him too. So I grew up with my dad and, you know, I lost him like 2015. So I, you know, me and him, it was like a very mo close movie with me and him. We used to watch it together. So when he died in the movie, right, I'd always have this like reassurance that he's alive in real life. And I haven't gone back and watched Rocky four now, but I just can't watch Rocky four. I'm not ready to watch Rocky four now. Again, it's just a guy that I'd never met. I never met Carl Weather, but we all, I think connected with him. How did that loss make you feel that he lost in real life? And how did that Rocky four inspire you? That movie did it inspire you as well. Uh, I mean, I loved Rocky and Apollo Creed was great. Um, you know, in other movies, Predator, I just love Predator. He dies in it too. You know, I, I love Dylan, you son of a bitch, you know, yeah. <laughs> it was iconic. Like, and then just like, he's just so cool. I'm like, man, that guy is so cool. And then he's funny too. He played the one handed guy to, on, uh, on, happy gilmore you know i love i love chubbs and that was great and then he was you know he was in uh arrested development and if you like if you have a sense of humor like me you think that arrested development is hysterical and uh he was like one of the funniest people on the whole show and it was a comedy show and then you know it was good seeing him in like the mandalorian and stuff like that he was directing episodes he's just cool you know i didn't know him on a personal level so um it's not like I was like devastated, but it's still sad to hear when someone that uh, you like their work um, passes away. And it seemed like an all around just good guy, no controversy that I know of yeah. or anything like that. Just good, hardworking guy. It's just cool. He's just yeah. cool. his legacy. His legacy is yeah. impressive. 
I don't think it's like him. I wasn't so much sad about him. I think it's the memories that his movies brought to us, right? It's how it feels. And he was very charismatic, right? So, yeah, very sad that he was gone since we're talking 80s actors, you know? Just seems like a big part of my childhood died, you know? It's sad. Um, so I wanted to ask you, so what's the future for you hold now? Like, um, obviously you said you're not going to get back. It doesn't sound like you're going to get back into fighting at this point, uh, like full on, you know, uh, MMA. What's, what are the goals now? What does the future hold? And, uh, do you plan on, it sounds like you inspire people. It sounds like people, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm assuming people come up to you and say, man, you've inspired me. You know, it's amazing what you've done, the feats you've accomplished. Uh, are you going to go into like motivational speaking? Is that something that you see down the road? Like, what do you, where do you see yourself? Um, yeah, but the the thing is with motivational speaking is it has to be real. You know, I'm not going to write a speech to inspire people with right. something that's fake. So I never um I never really wanted to um be something I'm not, like I say all the time. And I've gave a speech at my college they invited me to speak at the commencement and i did that and i was like oh i'm not a motivational speaker and i did it i did a pretty good job uh not like a phenomenal job but i did a pretty good job for someone that's just telling their story and how they yeah. actually feel and um and then i got a few gigs after that i recently did one for like a big time mortgage company and uh i killed it so i'm getting better at it so if any companies out there want to have me yeah. i uh, i got a standing ovation and they said i got more questions than anyone's ever gotten in the history of people coming there so uh i'm always a little self-conscious of my work but i think i'm i'm getting it down i got it down um and like i'm just gonna tell you my story and i'm gonna tell you how i really feel about things and i'm gonna be human about it when I do it, the thing is that sometimes people expect me, they either completely discount me and as nothing, or they expect me to be some like omnipotent guy that has no fear and no, um, mental blocks or anything. And that's, that's not necessarily true. Uh, as a human, I'm still a person. And every time I compete, no matter what it is, I'm, I'm scared in some capacity. I'm nervous and I don't want to lose. I work hard. You know, I always work hard. I always, I don't like being in a room and having someone work harder than me or knowing that I'm slacking. Uh, it doesn't make me feel good. So I'm always working hard, but I get nervous. You know, when you do that, you're like, Oh, I don't want to lose. I put all this in. Like, I want to be that guy. I want to do this. But at the end of the day, I, believe that no matter what i'll find a way to win you know i'll find a way to win so winning with what you have is the is the the motto and when i'm staring at that person or we're doing that and we're ready to go i know that they're experiencing everything that i'm experiencing and they feel all the same way no matter what they say and uh I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to find a way. And that's how I feel. And I know that I can do it. And I always believe that I can do it. And if I don't, then it wasn't meant to be. I leave no stone left unturned. I always try my hardest. I'll never quit. Never in a million years. And, uh, you know, it's just the, the type of person I am. So I just keep it real with people and I tell them how I really feel and not what I think they want me to say. And I feel like a lot of people can relate with that. I turn 38 next month again. So, uh, fighting is cool when you're a kid, you know, yeah. but it's a little harder as you get older and, and some people don't have other stuff going on. So they keep pushing. But with me, I feel like I could be good at anything that I want to do. Uh, eventually I'm going to set some time across uh, aside and try to do some broadcasting and some breakdowns and some media stuff myself. Um, but when I do it, I'm going to do it good. I'm not just going to half ass it. I'm not going to do a bad job at it. So, uh, that's down the line. And right now just running my gym, uh, helping my kids have a good childhood and good memories, uh, where I'm present and, helpful 
and you know, jujitsu tournaments just to keep me sane, compete to keep me motivated and keep me balanced. Even though competition drives me insane a little bit too, I uh, I like the threat. You know, I like the threats that it provides. It's very motivating for me as a person. Yeah, I think just because you hit such a pinnacle, like in your career and you've reached such high levels, it almost feels like someone who's done so much like that, it's got to be the what's the next mountain, right? Like, th- I don't know. It doesn't sound like you have the, like, do you, I'm thinking you have some things in your mind, but you don't know what the, the major mountain is, or do you want to hit another mountain? Like, I'm not sure. It sounds like you are driven still. Like, you really want to do something big. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, it, it all depends on on what level we're talking about here, because I'm not, um, you know, I'm doing the grappling and the jujitsu, and I went to the ADCC trials, which is one of the hardest tournaments in the world. Two hundred fifty six absolute studs in my bracket. I won four matches. I made it to the round of sixteen amongst the best guys in the world. Um, being an MMA fighter, really, I mean, I've been a black belt for 10 years, but, uh, my main focus has been fighting only like the past year and a half, two years of, I really focused on the intricacies of jujitsu and I did well with that. So I'm still alive in the game. You know, I still, uh, can do my thing. It's just, um, you know, how much am I willing to sacrifice with the other things I have going on in life? And it's not like I'm ever content. I have so many, I always have regrets. I think there's always things that you wish you did different. I can think back to like high school wrestling and think of things that I wish I did different or moments that I had that I lost and I felt like I should have won or, but there's nothing you can do, but just move on and, and build your legacy and make a better life for your family and just keep being a good person. So I'm just kind of taking it day by day and just getting better just in case an opportunity comes up. Yeah. You've inspired a lot of people for sure. Including myself. I had to hear your story and I appreciate you coming on, man. And maybe is there going to be a book coming? I know there was a movie on you, but is there going to be a, like, where, where can you see the movie? I heard there was like a movie on you or a docu series or something. Yeah, anywhere you can rent or buy movies, uh, it's a movie. It has Cody Christian in it. He's from All American and Teen Wolf, and he's like pretty good looking guy, uh, good actor. You know, it's a good it's a good movie. It's good for the men. It's good for the women. It's good for the family. Um, What's it called? That one? Notorious Nick. It's on Amazon or I think like Tubi or something. It might be free on Tubi. Okay, um, you okay. can buy it on YouTube. Um, I don't think it's that much, but it's like, it came out well. I mean, like any movie, it's not a hundred percent accurate, but overall it's a pretty fine film. It's entertaining for sure. It doesn't drag. Yeah. I'd like to see maybe do a book too. Maybe have you considered writing your book, a book about yourself too? Um, yeah. Uh, I started one when I was younger with the author, but I was an idiot. You know, when you're young, you're not as like, not that I was an idiot. Cause I always had like a decent head on my shoulder, but yeah, yeah. you don't know anything. Yeah. I was still living at home and just fighting. I didn't know anything about the real world. I had no perspective and not to say that people that live at home and are young don't have any perspective or idea about the real world. But I'm just saying me personally, I didn't have, I was I just know. having fun. I didn't have, I didn't know anything about responsibility. And, uh, now that my life is different and I understand responsibility and legacy and I'm kind of more in touch with myself as a person, um, I don't see why down the line, I can't make that happen. Definitely. Yeah. I'd love to see it, man. Thank you. Nick, thank you, man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, great story. Uh, I wish you continued fighting, but we all hit a point where it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, we get older. Right? Uh, one more, one more, one more. I need my moment. I need my yeah. moment. Sure. Oh, you want more, one more fight? Yeah. Okay. Why not? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, still have it. It's just the camps and everything is just, it's tough right now with everything that I have going on. And I've, I, uh, you know, 16 and four record, but I really feel like I should be 18 and two. Um, my last two losses were split decisions 
and there's some things that weren't ideal uh, when I was training for it that I didn't like that I kind of got to iron out. So next time I'm, I can uh, do it the right way. But one yeah. thing, an elephant in the room question that I saw in the comments because I saw your videos and I thought it was kind of rude. I have to ask you this. Okay, so when you were fighting Gaethje, right? Some people in the comments said, oh, Gaethje took it light on him. Gaethje got like, you can hear some of the haters in the comments. What do you say to people like that? And has, have you ever felt like someone ever took it light on you because of, of you know, with the one arm? Like, does anyone say to you like, oh, I'm going to take it light? Or did you ever feel that they were? Because again, I, let, I read a lot of people saying that, like just haters, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you felt yeah. him hitting me, you wouldn't think that he was going like, you know, I gave him, I gave him a good fight. I think if anything, people fight harder with me because they don't want to lose to the guy that has one hand. So if you ask him personally, if he went light on me, he's going to say absolutely not. he say you deserve a shot just like everyone else. You know, we fought that day. I had my moments, but he was a better man and he's still doing great and he's still uh, on top of the world and one of the most popular fighters in the world, one of the best in the world. So I, you know, I, I wish him nothing but luck. I hope he wins the title again. You know, he won the interim. I hope he wins the undisputed. Um, he wasn't going easy on me. And anyone thinks that they, uh, that people go easy on me can show up, uh, Milford, Connecticut fighting arts Academy CT. <laughs> 333 Quarry Road, Milford, Connecticut. Come in, sign the waiver. Um, I'll make you go through some of my students first, and if you can beat them, <laughs> then, you can, then you can get up to me. But you have to go. You have to go through. Yeah, you have to go through the students before you get to the final boss. See, everybody's a tough guy, and that I don't know how you deal. Like I've been learned to deal with it, man. I like, just don't care. I just don't care. Yeah. Why would you? I mean, the fact that, first of all, I, again, doing MMA, I did on amateur level. It's so hard, man. Like, it's it's such a mental thing, and there's, like, nerves, and it's, like, raw in there, and you feel it. It's, it's just, it's an amazing, to even do MMA is hard. And to do it on a pro level, right, and compete with a guy that's, like, top five in the world and, and, and hold it down with him is just, again, it's just, it's so hard, man. These guys are so tough. Yeah, people are like, oh, you only have one hand, you one-handed, you know, and it's like, you think I don't know that I only have one <laughs> hand, dude? Like, you think you're insulting me? Like, it's just like a scientific fact. The only difference between me and you is that you look for reasons to not do things, yeah. and I look for reasons to do things. So in your mind, it's a limitation, but in my in my mind, it doesn't matter. I'm going to make it happen. So that's why closed-minded, limited people are the ones that attack me or say it's not possible. But the people that are successful in life and the people that have actually done things right. and the people that actually work for things will either find it impressive or be like, yeah, of course he did it. He wanted to do it. He's tough. They understand the mentality, but the people that are trying to knock me down, they don't have that mindset. So it's foreign to them. It sounds crazy that someone would do something with all these limitations or these obstacles because they might not even have those obstacles, but they don't have the motivation to do anything or take risks or be anything. So it's just a different world that we live in and a different mindset. So limited minded, limited minded people. I don't vibe with them. I think they're funny. They make me laugh. Go ahead, make a joke, make fun of my arm. But at the end of the day, you're the joke because I'm the one out here that you're talking about and I don't even know who you are. So, you know, at the end, I'm winning and you're reaching for the low hanging fruit because your mind can't comprehend what I what my mind comprehends. And we're operating on different wavelengths and different different uh, levels. And, and just from my perspective, because I'm an analyst, right? I just do the talking. I'm not even an athlete. But even the same trolls that bug you bug me. And they're like, when I say a player like had a bad performance in fantasy or he sucked in fantasy or whatever, right? They're like, oh, who are you to talk? Who are you just like a, a couch potato? But I work out, right? Like I'm not a couch potato completely. But uh, they're like, oh, you're, you're just a loser. Who You'll never amount to these guys. I'm like, what makes them better than me, right? Like it's like. Everybody just thinks that because they're an athlete, they're they're above people like that. But even like yourself, you're an athlete. You're already up here, and they're still making fun of you. Like it's, there's always someone out there that like that's unhappy with themselves, trying to put somebody down. It's crazy out there. You just got to filter it, right? That's it. Get it. Ignore it. Yeah, I only make fun of my friends. Yeah, me too. 
I'm brutal. <laughs> to them. If you're my friend, you know that I'm just absolutely brutal to you. But everyone else, it's like go live your life, go do something. You know, you got yeah. something better to do. You're the one. You're the one. They're the ones telling you they who are you to judge, but they're the ones watching your your podcast or listening. They are. So it's like, like, go start your own podcast. Give your own opinion, man. This is the the United States of America, freedom of speech, freedom to judge people, freedom to say, you know, this guy should have done this guy, should have done that. You know, like, who cares, man? Worry about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I get it a lot, man. It's it's I've had I've had everything. I've had death threats. I've had everything you could think of. They they've come at me. I mean, I just like I've over the years I just have a thick skin. It's unbelievable. But yeah, I just don't them out. It increases the algorithm on my post, so I don't I don't really yeah. care. I'll get into your fantasy football league next year. I used to do it. Uh I used to do it when I was when I like years ago when I worked oh. and and I don't really watch – I watch a Super Bowl, to be honest with you, but I don't really watch that much football or super invested, even though I find it very impressive. Um, so I'm strictly a numbers guy. So I usually do pretty good because I just go strictly off numbers. For sure. So, yeah, like uh, <laughs> it'll, get you, it'll get you back into it and you can focus on your players. And um, I got something cool coming up with fantasy football this year. I'm going to surprise people. Um, that's coming okay. with, with – it involves athletes uh, getting involved too. Cool, so it's cool. Cool. So yeah, well, well, we'll keep in touch, man. Nick, I mean, it's a pleasure having you. I want to have you again. I want to hear. I want to get your book when it comes out. I'm going to go back and watch your movie. I haven't watched the movie Notorious Nick. Uh, again, it was acted by somebody, so you weren't in it. Somebody played you. Yeah, somebody played me. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I'm going to watch it now. Now I got to. I got to watch it. So Nick, and yeah. there's. I would say something. So I'm a little older. I did this. I fought. I'm doing my thing. But there's a lot of guys out there. There's guys out there that fight that have one hand that aren't as well known as me. Um, but they're making they're making their name and they're making their mark. There's this kickboxer, Jake Peacock. I want you to check him out. If you go on his Instagram, you just type in Jake Peacock or Jake, Jake Lee Striking. Check him out. He's a kickboxer. He's crazy. And he's still young. He's got a lot in the tank. And I think he just signed with 1FC. So uh, he's someone to look out for and someone to watch. I'm just a, such a big fan of his, you that know, that, that I tell movie? everyone to check him out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think he's like 30. So he's like just reaching his prime okay. right now. But he's a oh, he's a monster and he's still fighting and he's active and and uh, he's really impressive. Really. I cornered him for one fight just because he was in my he was in New York City for a fight. And he's like, hey, Nick, you want to come down? And uh, I'm like such a big fan of his, so it's definitely someone to check out if you like one-handed Look people. Jake Peacock. Okay, I got him. Jake uh, Lee Lee striking. Yeah, someone to, uh, definitely. You should reach out to that guy. He's crazy, man. He's cool. A very good guy too. Um, I like it. Yeah, the next the next thing, you know, the next thing. And uh, follow me. I do the. I have a tournament, a jujitsu tournament coming up. Uh, this weekend I'm doing the ADCC open and then I'm in a $10,000 tournament, uh, jujitsu tournament for Enigma grappling. It's going to be like a lot of the best guys in the world. And, uh, they invited me into the tournament. So I'm going to go do my thing. Dude, I love talking fighting, man. I could talk fighting all day. This would be a, you know, a whole day conversation. I could talk fighting scenarios, situations. I'm just all about 80s, 90s, and just fighting in general. So I'm, I'm, I love having people like yourself on. Uh, I had Terrence McKinney, UFC fighter. Benil Dariush is a friend of this show. Had him on. Just uh, Ken Shamrock, I got to get him back on. He's, he's, he's a wild man out there. But I just love talking fighting, man. So it was a pleasure having you on, man. Really was. Yeah, I follow all those guys. I remember I met Ken Shermark before one of my fights, and I was surprised at how nice he was as a guy, even though he's got Super some nice. crazy stories. Super nice. And then obviously Terrence McKinney's a great guy, and Benil Daryush I met at the UFCPI. Super nice guy. So great I appreciate people. you having me on the show, and uh, I look forward to being on again. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it, guys. Make sure you guys go follow him, and uh, thank you for coming on, man. We're out, guys. Thank you.